Jaceris Waters. I mean, Jaceris Strong. I mean, Jaceris Valarian is the eldest son of Rhaenyra Targaryen and her dearly departed husband, Laenor Valarian. At least in the legal sense. Jaceris is really the son of Rhaenyra's lover, Harwin Strong. But depending on who you ask, some theorists may suggest that Prince Jaceris is actually the son of Rhaenyra's one-time lover, Sir Kristen Cole. And let me be the first to say, no, absolutely not. There is no shame in theories in the Song of Ice and Fire. I mean, it's honestly half the fun of the show, picking up the context clues and trying to piece together this intricate puzzle and the satisfaction of knowing that you were right. Or that you were wrong, but the story is still just as mystical and entertaining as before. But let me tell you why Kristen is not the father. I mean, I swear I have never despised a theory like I do this one, and if they add it to the show, there will be problems. All I'm saying. But anyway, aside from Kristen being the father not adding much, if anything, to the story, there's actually evidence to support that. But feel free to debate that in the comments, though I'm sure I don't even need to ask for that. The whole foundation of this theory consists of the fact that we don't know if Rhaenyra actually drank the moon tea after Viserys found out she lost her virginity. If you don't know, moon tea is what was given to the serving girl Aegon assaulted to prevent pregnancy. Now, as I said, we don't know if she drank the tea, but there's also another thing that we don't know for certain, and that's if Rhaenyra was pregnant in the first place. If she wasn't, then the tea wouldn't have mattered either way. Then we skip 10 years and Jace is born, and he looks nothing like Kristen. Jace is pale like Harwin and Rhaenyra. He has brown hair like Harwin, not black hair like Kristen. And if you're like Viserys with this little horse story, there is other evidence to convince you. One being that if Jace was Kristen's son, that would make him older than Aemon, since the whole debacle happened before he was even born, and possibly conceived. Or, how about when Jace literally asked Rhaenyra if Harwin is his father? Is Harwin strong my father? You are a Targaryen. That's all that matters. Rhaenyra says this for obvious reasons, she can't tell the truth or she'll risk her inheritance, but if Kristen Cole was his father, why doesn't she just say no when he asks about Harwin? If she knew Kristen was his dad, then she could have just answered no when he asked. Rhaenyra doesn't want to lie to her sons, but she wouldn't be lying if she just said no, it would be the truth. Of course, she wouldn't tell him Kristen was his father, but she'd still be telling the truth that Harwin wasn't. But she decides to be cryptic because she doesn't want to lie to her son or really tell the truth as that could be very bad for them in case anyone was listening. Then further evidence is how Harwin acts around Rhaenyra's sons. It's clear he loves them and they love him. Rhaenyra even mentions later on that she and Laenor tried to have kids but it never worked out. Making kids takes time and I doubt when Rhaenyra got pregnant with Jace they just assumed he was Laenor's. Sex does not always equate to someone having a child. Rhaenyra has sex with Daemon on Driftmark and she does get pregnant from that encounter. She doesn't drink any tea then. And while it's understandable that people could speculate Jace being the son of Kristen, I just can't see it. Everything points to no. But regardless of who the baby daddy really is, let's move on. Jaceris Valarian is one of three bastard children. Or five, technically? Aegon and Viserys, the two youngest children of Rhaenyra, were born from her marriage with Daemon. But across the sea, from what we know, Laenor is still alive. If that were to be found out, would Aegon and Viserys be considered bastards because her first husband faked his death? Or is it for that reason they would still be considered legitimate? Because Rhaenyra got married under the context that he died. Just some food for thought, I guess. Being a bastard is something heavily scrutinized in Westeros, as I mentioned in my other House of the Dragon analysis videos. Feel free to check out my playlist on those things. Bastards are seen as the incarnations of evil. Marriage is a sacred thing in Westeros, and a child born outside of it tends to be looked down on. Like Jon Snow, despite being a noble hero, people still hated and looked down on him because his mother wasn't his supposed father's wife. People thought he'd be just like Ramsay Snow or Joffrey Baratheon, the incarnations of evil most people believe all bastards will be. He isn't even considered to be a real part of the Stark family because of that, and people believe he is destined for terrible things. Though I guess that's kinda true considering what happened in Season 8. But I digress. Just because someone is a bastard doesn't mean they're a terrible person. Plenty of trueborn children can be worse than a bastard. Like Cersei, Jaime from the earlier seasons, Roos Bolton, and Aegon II. Though if you watch my Aegon analysis, you'll know I think he was pretty much screwed from the start. 
Jaceris Valarian is a bastard, and there is no arguing that. It doesn't matter where his claim to the throne comes from, whether it be from his mom Rhaenyra or Laenor, he still falls behind Aegon, Aemon, Daeron, and even Helena in terms of succession. But I'm not going to spend time going over all the specifics of that in this video, perhaps a different one in the future, but one thing at a time for now. Jace defies the Westerosi belief of illegitimate children, though the belief is kind of stupid because no one is born evil, no matter how hard you want to believe that. I'm looking at you, Team Black. Jaceris, by all means, is a good kid, at least in comparison to the wackos you see in the world of Ice and Fire. He doesn't violate people, he's not one for torture, he doesn't use violence as a coping mechanism. He loves his family and from what we see is pretty devoted to making himself a good king. But like most people in the story, he is definitely not a saint or without his faults. Despite being one of the more noble men in this world, it does seem like people ignore one obvious fact about him. And that is that Jace is a hothead. He's quick to anger and doesn't think all of his actions through. Like on Driftmark, as I mentioned in my Aemon video, people overlook that whole knife scene. Now, we can go back and forth about who really escalated the fight all day long, but one thing is clear. Jaceris pulling out his knife was not self-defense. Aemon didn't charge him with a rock and Jace just pulled it out on reflex. He didn't even pull it out when Aemon was holding Luke with a rock in his hand. He only pulls it out when he's called a bastard. He doesn't know, does he? Or strong. That's when he pulls out the knife and attacks Aemon. Jace was out for blood. He wasn't defending himself or defending his brother. He wanted to hurt Aemon for calling him a bastard. And that's because bastardy is a source of insecurity for him. And it's a funny thing, a lot of Targaryen men are actually driven by insecurity in the story. Viserys, who's insecure about his reign and place in history. Daemon, who's insecure about the power he possesses and his standing with his brother. Aegon, whose lack of love caused him to be an unstable wreck of a man. And Aemon, who lacked the confidence and self-esteem in himself because he didn't have a dragon, when having a dragon was literally the staple for his whole family. And of course, this extends beyond the Targaryens, as well as House of the Dragon. Like with Tyrion and Jon in Game of Thrones. Never forget what you are. The rest of the world will not. Wear it like armor. And it can never be used to hurt you. What the hell do you know about being a bastard? All dwarves are bastards in their father's eyes. These two are insecure men, so they find ways to compensate for what they lack, trying to prove themselves. In Jace's case, he lacks legitimacy, and there is no way to gain it without the people around him admitting he doesn't have it. So, he walks around with a chip on his shoulder. It's not enough for him to just be the prince, he has to prove it to everyone. And this is Rhaenyra's fault. I mean, sure, you can blame society. They're at fault, too. But Rhaenyra takes most of the blame to me because she truly doesn't understand the damage she's doing to her kids. It's easy to hear that and think, well, how is she hurting them when she's just trying to keep them safe from this harsh society? A similar thing can be said about Alicent. Even though she's the more overbearing and abusive of the two, she does bad things because she thinks it'll keep her family safe. Rhaenyra is no different. She tries hiding the truth of bastardy from her sons, but the court sees it. Their family sees it. And before long, they see it. It's so blatantly obvious and yet she tries to act as if it doesn't matter when it does, and I don't just mean in terms of politics. Her sons are being groomed as heirs to the realm, yet almost every day their legacy is put to question. They're made to feel ashamed of their birth by the people around them, and that includes Rhaenyra. How she constantly pushes the narrative of their legitimacy, always lying and manipulating a truth that everyone knows, unknowingly reinforcing everyone's view that bastards are bad. Bastards have no right to inherit the throne. If they did, why not just be honest about it? This takes a toll on her sons, and she doesn't see that, and she doesn't try to reinforce them. They know they're different. They know they aren't like everyone else, and when their mother keeps pushing and pushing this narrative of who they are, they feel as if that's who they need to be. And so they become insecure about who they are. Like Aegon. Jace, in a way, is like a foil to Aegon. The differing results of society and parental pressure and expectation. Because Aegon is the eldest son, the prince, and the man many see as the king to be, he's expected to be perfect, flawless, and trying to live up to these standards every day basically destroys what and who he could have been. Jace is a bastard, and as such everyone expects him to fail, to slip up and be a terrible person, and that's what drives him to be better, to prove them all wrong, 
It makes him eager, too eager. Whereas the pressure Egon endures turns him into an underachiever, the pressure Jace endures turns him into an overachiever. Egon is tired of having to constantly prove himself to people, but proving himself is all Jace wants to do. He studies Valyrian, practices with a sword. He wants to leave no room for anyone to question him, to tell him that he is not a Targaryen, that he is not worthy. He's proactive and quick to action, but these things can be as negative as they are positive. Jaceris, as I stated before, is a hothead, and that stems from his insecurity of being a bastard. As such, he always looks for a way to compensate, and some of that is through violence. Like when he encounters his extended family. When Aegon starts moving in on Bela, Jace tries to be calm about it, telling Aegon to stop, but when his uncle keeps going, he slams the table, and now everyone's looking at him. Because to them, that outburst just came out of nowhere. Now he has to start thinking of something on the spot to save himself from embarrassment. And to his credit, he does. But when Aemon chimes in, whatever composure he has goes out the window. Come. Let us drain our cups to these three strong boys. I dare you to say that again. This insult is framed like a compliment, but it's one of those things where if you know, you know. Aemon's goal was to get a rise out of him, a reaction, some form of acknowledgement. But he does so in a way that he himself can be framed as the innocent. Whether what he says is true or not, they are still viewed as princes. And he learned from his mistake on Driftmark, unlike Jaceris. This whole scenario is reminiscent of what happens between Kristen Cole and Harwin Strong years before. Like Aemon, he uses veiled words as a trap, and like father like son, Harwin falls right into it. It surprises me how many people think Harwin actually won something with that too because he punched Kristen in the face a few times. It's like they fail to see the smile that Kristen has on his face when he's in the dirt. He got everything he wanted out of that. The situation was something that could have easily been resolved with words, but instead Harwin resorts to violence, makes himself look guilty, and gets exiled away from his lover and children. He talks about honor, but instead he was just being foolish but the blurred line between honor and stupidity is used often in Game of Thrones. Still though, if Harwin really wanted to preserve the honor of the princess and her children, he could have easily flipped this back onto Kristen by saying something like, what man wouldn't treat the princes as their own? They are the future of the realm and must be protected at all costs. I would think a king's guard would know better, or something like that. But no, he gets himself sent back to Harrenhal and murdered by his little brother. What good was honor when it got him killed? Jace makes the same mistake with Aemon. Instead of trying to resolve the situation, flip it in his favor and be more tactful, he just attacks him. Of course, we know the implication of what Aemon said, but all Aemon has to do is play the role of doting uncle, and now Jace is the bad guy. Instead of rewriting his narrative, he only reinforces it. And that may not seem like a big deal because this was a family gathering, but there are still other people here. Servants, guards, witnesses that can attest to their character outside of this room. Now, Jay seems like a guy who picked a fight for no reason, and this isn't even the last time he gets aggressive for no reason either. When he trains with Lucerus, he's just pummeling this kid and then chastises him for not being good enough. People will say he's just trying to teach and prepare him, but this isn't how you teach someone. Sure, when you teach, you can't be too soft, but you can't be too hard. Different people respond to different things in different ways. Lucerus is a kid who already has low confidence and self-esteem, and is pretty unsure of himself. So yelling at him, beating him down, and then telling him to get it together is not going to make him better. Jace is overcompensating, in my eyes, embarrassed by that whole situation with Aemon, how they got handled so easily, and now everyone is going to question their strength and their capabilities. And as I've mentioned numerous times already, he's insecure about stuff like that. Jace tries to act like he doesn't care about people's opinions. It doesn't matter what they think. I could care less what anyone thinks of me. You know, that's what you want people to think of you. But the people who tend to act like they don't care are usually the ones who care the most. Jace has the makings of a good future king. He takes his duty seriously, wants to do his duties well, but he lets his emotions get him into trouble, and I could easily see him making rash decisions because it was in the heat of the moment. He's eager and proactive to a fault, honestly. He needs to know when to turn up the heat and when to cool himself off. If he doesn't, someone is bound to get burned. And, if he isn't careful, it may just be him.